enough space when you get one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me uh, allow, uh, accept all, bismillah. Oh, it's so nice to see so many familiar names. <laughs> Juliana, okay. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming uh, for our webinar. Uh, this, my name is Mohammed Tamimi. Uh, I'm part of the uh, team uh, organizing this event. Uh, uh, also, my uh, colleague, uh, Khawla, uh, is the director of Quality Enhancement and Accreditation Unit. Welcome to you all. Uh, I'm, I'm the director of the Language Center and professor of English and uh, life skills and entrepreneurship, etc. Uh, I'm trying to accept everybody. Steve is here. Everybody's here. Great. Uh, we muted you, but you can open your camera if you wish to. It's up to you. And then we have a discussion uh, with our uh, team, with our colleagues and presenters. So you can actually, uh, uh, we'll unmute you when it's time for you to speak. So. Uh, please feel free uh, uh, to mute yourself, to unmute yourself when you want to raise your hand or in a way or another. But the camera, we turn it on, so you decide if you want to keep your camera or not. Um, uh, again, thank you for coming. Uh, I would like to introduce my uh, uh, presenters. Uh, uh, we're very excited that you guys are here. Uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy that technology allowed this number of people to meet you know, in any place you are, in the, whether you're at home or in your office uh, or um, running in your car even, and you can do that, uh, you know, if you're in the freeway. Uh, uh, Christiana uh, uh, has been working uh, for at least 11 years as a teacher. Uh, oh, she worked as a teacher for 11 years and she became a Delta certified teacher educator. After that, um, for the last uh, 12 years, she worked as um, in different capacities. One of them is a teacher educator, uh, and she also worked as a, a trainer of trainers. Uh, she is also an e-moderator and also an examiner for international certificates uh, and a material writer. Also, uh, she collaborated in different projects that involved thousands of teachers around the world. Uh, we thought that her expertise would add a value to what we're doing here. And we would like, you know, um, uh, to uh, looking forward to your presentation and discussion with the audience as well as with our team here. Uh, Theo is, uh, uh, she uh, has been teaching uh, English for many years. I'm not going to say the number of years. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> uh, um, she started very young, so that's yeah, the secret. Yeah, when she was five years old. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. She also became a teacher educator in 2007. She started working as an e-moderator, an e-mentor for the British Council in online courses uh, in 2010 till now. Uh, she has worked in many different projects with teachers from all over the world. Um, what connects us, uh, Theo, Christiana, and myself is that uh, we're uh, e-moderators. An e-moderator means that you're able to uh, not only teach online, but also actually help assist other teachers to be, uh, uh, to teach online. And this is really a great opportunity to have you here. Here, I also wanna highlight that their major might be English, but they have, been done, they have done work in different areas. So everything that they say applies to all disciplines and all fields. Um, I wanna give the mic to uh, my colleague, uh, Khawla and then we'll start with your presentation for 30 minutes. After that, we'll, do, uh, we'll ask the, uh, the presenters some questions and then we'll open it for the audience as well. So thank you, go ahead. Okay, thank you for, uh, being, with, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you, Theo, Christina. Uh, we are glad uh, to, uh, we are honored to be with us. Uh, we know that uh, engagement and motivation in uh, students in uh, classes are uh, very, very important. Uh, especially uh, when uh, we move to the online uh, teaching. Uh, so we uh, are looking forward to hear from you, uh, to learn from you, to share experience with you and with the, all the, uh, our uh, uh, audience.
ones uh, who are welcome also and thank you for the being with us yeah you can start with the uh, presentation now Great, Mohammed. If you could okay. kindly make me host, so okay. that we can uh, on one promise from here. we'll accept the newcomers. Okay, of course, right. <laughs> I will welcome them with open arms. Perfect, uh, Christiana. Uh, more Nick, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's very nice uh, to meet new people, and it's uh, also very lovely to see some familiar faces and familiar names. Uh, welcome, everybody. Let me uh, tell you exactly what uh, uh, we are going to do today. So um, our main focus is how to keep learners engaged and motivated when uh, doing online classes, because with uh, this shift towards e-learning and e-teaching, we need to be aware that um, although many things are similar, we also have to adapt our strategies for the online environment. So basically, um, we will try to identify some key terms so that we make sure that uh, we, we all have the same uh, terminology and um, we start from the same uh, uh, starting point. Then we will find some, uh, try to find some ways to keep the learners engaged and motivated. And we do rely on you. I mean, it's not going to be a presentation. It's going to be um, a, a workshop. We, we will communicate and we will come up with ideas together. And uh, also try to see how certain strategies that work from, for certain people could be adapted to your context. It's great that we have uh, people from different countries here because uh, like this we can uh, share um, and have more diversity. I just want to mention the, the fact that uh, the young man <laughs> who is only 10 actually sitting at his, at his desk uh, and uh, looking at his German teacher is my son. And um, my uh, son's school adapted very quickly to uh, the new situation. They took four days uh, to get organized, find a suitable platform, uh, train the teachers, which I think is very important. And then they started online. And this is his very first online class. Uh, what I'd like to point out also is the fact that if you look out the window in the picture, we are not in the city. Uh, when the whole uh, madness began, my son and I uh, fled to our mountain house because here we don't have any neighbors. We can go out, we can take walks. So you can see here one advantage of um, um, online learning, it can be done anywhere and uh, you have uh, this flexibility to travel to be somewhere else than your home. So these are our learning outcomes, but I'm sure uh, more will uh, come from, uh, from your questions. Teo. Um, so one thing that Mohammed uh, hasn't mentioned is our capacity. We are here <laughs> in our capacity as parents as well, <laughs> which I think adds to, to this perspective uh, and um, adds more experience. As I was saying just before uh, the webinar started, my son is doing German right now and my daughter is doing some Romanian classes. So everybody is working online <laughs> at this very moment. Um, as Christiana said, a lot of things have changed and we are wondering where is education now? Where are we now? And what are we doing these days? Um, students and teachers don't go to school anymore, but somehow school has come to our homes. Is it homeschooling? Uh, I think you, uh, I would like to find out your opinion between, uh, of, about the difference between homeschooling and remote or online teaching. Mm -hmm. You can either type in the chat or you can tell us, is there any difference? or is it pretty much the same? Is it the fact that we are doing school, we are at home? Is it the same with remote learning or are there any differences? So you are welcome to, to share your uh, ideas with us mm -hmm. in the I, chat. I think we started uh, uh, this uh, discussion with this because uh, many of us have seen online lots of videos uh, with parents who are absolutely yeah. <laughs> desperate. And there are some fun ones, even from uh, Palestine and Israel, with ladies, with mothers especially, who are very much involved in uh, uh, the children's education, 
who are absolutely desperate and they, they feel that they cannot manage it. So this is what uh, the question is, right? Um, okay, so uh, Theo, people are starting okay. to answer your question in the chat. Great. So uh, homeschooling parents are ready and trained to teach at home. Yes, true. So it's the, the parents, that's a very good point. The parents who teach, okay, mm -hmm. and they are trained. That's also a very interesting point to do this. Totally on parents, uh, while remote uh, learning depends on teachers. That's a very good. That's a very good point. Yes, mm -hmm. well done. Okay. Keep adding your your thoughts. Yes, parents are more involved in homeschooling. True. Okay. That's a very yes, good point. That's I a very good point. <laughs> yes, homeschooling may not necessarily include online sessions. You're right. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not the same, definitely. Yes, it's a shift in, in responsibilities. That's a very good point, Theo. So uh, responsibility of the parents or responsibility of the teachers. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Okay. So perfect. then it, it seems that we do understand the same things by the same words. Yes. So, so let's <laughs> see what the... Um, well, what homeschooling is actually and you are right it's learning outside of the public or private school environment so you're not connected to the school anymore uh, in any way uh, not in a, in a formal way uh, as well a commitment by a parent or guardian to oversee their child or teens of course educational development so as you well mentioned it becomes the parents or the guardians responsibility to um, take action and to lead the way to uh, uh, the, the student's um, education. Okay, while in remote or online learning, the learner and the instructor uh, are separated by time and distance. So it's actually remote also in terms of distance, not only in terms of um, in other terms, and therefore they cannot meet in the classroom setting anymore. The information and the learning materials are usually sent via technology, and technology plays a very important role in this uh, type of learning. Great. So we have to bear in mind that when we, uh, throughout today's uh, uh, webinar, when we talk about uh, education now, we are referring to remote or online learning. Uh, and it's good that uh, we, we uh, all know the difference between that and homeschooling. Um, but what does it mean uh, for, for the, all those involved? You know, what are the responsibilities uh, of uh, the teachers, of the learners, maybe, maybe even of the, of the parents? Um, okay, the, somebody says in the chat we can combine both. Okay. <laughs> let's let's uh, remember that for the end of our presentation and then we can discuss it maybe more in in depth so if we refer to um, to online learning it is the teachers responsibility to first of all find online tools that are accessible uh, to and engaging for the learners so it's useless if you have these great ideas and you want to have uh, lessons uh, I, on I don't know what platform, if that platform uh, requires a lot of bandwidth and your uh, learners do not have good connection at home. It would be completely useless. The teacher would be on uh, their own uh, um, at home <laughs> trying to uh, connect uh, with the learners while the learners cannot actually connect. So technically it's not possible for them to connect. So we have to adjust uh, the platforms to choose the right tools so that our learners can actually use them. Um, and we will see further on what we mean by var the variety of, um, uh, of platforms and tools. It is also important to show learners that the school is preoccupied with their education uh, and how uh, we can do that or how the school can do that is that having a clear schedule having a clear approach and a common approach on the on the online learning probably choosing um as a starting point choosing a common platform for everybody even if of course the, the teachers uh, should be allowed to use a variety of sources but somehow keeping things together um i've some uh, somewhere read structure and rhythm and this is there are two words that very um go very well here and uh, 
uh, having a clear structure, having a clear schedule, of course, keeping in touch, uh, will demonstrate that the school really is really involved in this process and cares for the for the students. Exactly. That that word cares, I think, is very important, yeah. as you said, Theo. The fact that the learners feel that it's not only about learning, it's about the learners. It's not just about us teaching so that we deserve a salary. It's uh, all about us wanting to make a difference, to help them continue learning. Uh, also, it's our responsibility as teachers to keep the learners motivated and engaged. Uh, we have to, to um, think about what changes for the learner, what changes for us, how can we make sure that the learner, although we can see the learner is uh, connected and it's online in live sessions, for instance, or we can see that the learner did what we asked him or her to do um, in an asynchronous way, how do we know that they actually are interested and they stay interested? So we have, it's our responsibility. It's not the parents. The parents are parents. The parents are not teachers. It's our responsibility as educators to make sure that we stay in touch with the learners and we will see how we can do that. And at this point, uh, if I might add something, it's also Please. important to help the students become, I think it's a great opportunity for them at this time mm -hmm. to become more independent and more autonomous. And I somehow, um, if you want to keep them engaged, you need to encourage them to, to get engaged, but also to create a personal uh, program, a personal schedule to get organized themselves, not only to expect us to uh, organize them. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it's very important to keep parents in this, uh, in this group. So it's important to inform them about how you as teacher or as school are continuing the educational progress. Mm -hmm. And it's important to keep them, um, um, to keep them informed by, I don't, I don't know, you can use many different tools to this. Uh, you can even set some office hours. I was thinking these days that you can set some office hours for the parents to ask you um, questions and to you can off, you need to offer them some guidelines and some uh, technical uh, guidelines in order to help so that they can also help and support their students' uh, mm -hmm. involvement in the in the learning in online learning. Mm -hmm. And I think so, this is very important important to have sorry <laughs> to have very clear uh, rules in this communication, mm -hmm. not only with the uh, students but also with the parents. Yes, I think uh, it's very important for the school and the teachers, with the help of the parents and of the learners, to set up, as you said, a set of rules. It could be a code of conduct, it could be some guidelines that address all those involved. Uh, so, uh, as, as we said, that the parents should be involved, but in a way that is that means support, maybe mostly technical support. But it doesn't mean, and we should make it clear for the parents, it doesn't mean that they should do the learning, they should do the work, they should actually uh, work uh, for the learner. No, they are supposed to be there if they are required to assist the learner. If possible, some of them cannot do that because they do not work from home. Uh, so we should uh, um, uh, strive to make our learners independent, as they were saying. We shouldn't rely on the parents too much. It's not their job. <laughs> Uh, so now that we have presented some of the, the, the points, the responsibilities of the teachers, we would like to find out from you, which of these do you find the most challenging? So in your context, what do you struggle with the most? And again, you can type in the chat and the chat and we'll keep an eye on it. Exactly. In many times, parents are are not available so and they shouldn't be this is my point you know yeah. maybe they they were supposed to help the learners more in the first couple of weeks now that the learners understand the the platforms we work on they understand the rules that we uh, establish together the parents shouldn't be a big part of the equation yeah and I remember uh, as a parent, a uh, parent in my, in my daughter's classroom saying we had a very difficult, we had very difficult homework for uh, mathematics. <laughs> and then we, I know, I did my homework when I was a student. Now I don't have any more homework, thank God. So um, I think this is very important to, to keep in mind. Yes, Georgiana, I agree. Uh, I think one of the most important uh, challenges is uh, the motivation and the engagement, making sure that they 
uh, stay um, active because they want to, because they are curious, because whatever subject matter you teach, they want to find out more. Okay, so I see that for most of you. <laughs> that is, uh, um, yes, that is a big part. Um, yes, maybe not, not necessarily train them, but it would be nice okay. to have um, some uh, teacher parents meetings, maybe to inform them regularly about any changes of school policy uh, as far as uh, online learning is concerned. Uh, they should be able to, to support the learners a bit technically. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, I made, for instance, three, a, a series of three videos for parents in which I was recommending that they get familiar with the platform so that they can assist the learners without necessarily being experts. We just want them to be able to uh, give a helping hand. Yeah, the interactivity, some, yeah. Steve, that is also uh, yeah, a challenge. Sorry, important. sorry, Theo. No, no, <laughs> that's exactly what I was reading, uh, exactly that uh, <laughs> reply. Mm -hmm. uh, collaboration and uh, um, cooperation may seem important challenges uh, online, but by adapting certain um, certain strategies, we can do that. So, uh, if the opportunity doesn't arise, maybe in the next uh, twenty minutes, Steve, when uh, when we take questions, uh, we you may uh, you may remind us about that, and we can go uh, into something that's. Uh, we have tried and uh, have, has worked for us. Okay, great. Now, um, Theo? <laughs> yeah. So, um, there are many strategies to improve motivation online, and I'm sure you are already using a lot of them. Uh, and I have another question for you. Do you, in your context, do you do synchronous or asynchronous teaching? Um, and by synchronous, okay. of course, we mean yes. video conferencing uh, yeah. like this one. Any platform you might use, right? You might use Microsoft Teams, uh, WebEx, uh, Google Meet, whatever. Synchronous is when we are all online, right? Yeah, and actually and something, that we, something that allows you and the learners to get instant messages that's mm -hmm. all about synchronous, while asynchronous is anything else that doesn't necessarily, it can be online, but it can also be offline at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, like forums and discussions, yes. as uh, Mohammed pointed out. Great. So most most of us mm -hmm. uh, combine the two, which I think is the strategy, isn't That's it? Best. Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, yeah. do you have any particular motivational strategies that uh, you you like to use? Yes, both is both is great. You're right. Icebreakers, excellent games. Yes. Very good point. From question polls, sure. Asking for feedback is very important mm -hmm. because they feel engaged and involved. Personalized ta tasks, hmm, a lot of familiar uh, strategies, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Improvising, okay. Ah. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, Online games, <laughs> annotate buttons, okay? So use all the tools that you have at your disposal in different uh, uh, online platforms, on different platforms or um, synchronous mm -hmm. video conferencing platforms. Okay, a lot of, a lot of uh, games, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Videos, so using the tools that are now available easily because we are online. Uh, Theo, who continues to teach, was uh, pointing out uh, in another event that it's so much easier now to use everything you wanted to use in the yeah, classroom, but exactly. you couldn't because you didn't have maybe an interactive whiteboard or a video projector. You can use that uh, all, all of that now. Quite a Great. lot of yeah, quite a lot of tools that you couldn't use now you can do it at a click of a button. You know. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> So we should, uh, while we deal with the challenges, we should also focus on the on the positive. So obviously, uh, um, there are lots of uh, motivational strategies. We will look at uh, some that um, uh, are most often encountered uh, in uh, pedagogy books, but uh, we will also have a little twist and a little question afterwards. So the fact that many of you said games, 
made, uh, I'm sure that made Teo's uh, heart very happy. <laughs> Why? Because she's a specialist in games. She loves um, uh, creating games, adapting games. Playing so she, games. Playing games, <laughs> exactly. So uh, she, she's very good at, uh, at doing that. I, I, I learned a lot from, from her uh, in that uh, respect. And also the fact that you mentioned personalization is great because this is how we make sure that uh, the learners find that the, whatever we teach, whatever we, subject matter we teach, they will find it interesting if it's something they can connect uh, with, if it's something they can relate to. Okay. And sometimes I wonder if I, uh, I enjoy more playing games or, uh, than the, my students. <laughs> and uh, Christiana made, made a very good point and, uh, a bit earlier and said that we, we can use everything that we have so use all the games and everything that you have online. We don't have to reinvent the wheel and reinvent the games. Use them, maybe adapt them, but use what you have. And this uh, takes me to, to, the second, to the next point, adapt materials so that they are not only learner's level, which is, of course, very important because if you make them too easy, they will get bored. If you make them too challenging, they will feel probably frustrated and we don't want to discourage them, we want to encourage them. So um, I, one, one thing I would like to add here is keeping in mind that presenting content and adapting materials at a distance is usually more time consuming. So we need to keep this in mind when adapting materials and adapting the content because we already have books and we have the textbooks and a lot of digital textbooks that the publishing houses um, offer but we need to keep in mind that most of the times it takes a bit more so mm -hmm. adapt only, not only to the level but also to the to the time available and because Theo and I uh, both uh, have been working online for the uh, last 10 years we understand I mean we completely empathize with teachers who now work from home it's even more difficult to adapt and to work on the materials and create maybe new materials, find authentic materials when the whole household <laughs> is around you, when uh, you uh, have also to, to uh, take care of your family and of your children. So it can be uh, a lot more challenging than just going to school, having your uh, workplace uh, here. It's more difficult to draw the line between the workplace and the uh, work hours and the private time and the private space. Um, another way in which we can uh, motivate the learners is to ask them um, to, to try to see why they are not uh, answering when we ask a question. So um, maybe create the opportunity for um, small groups. If you use the Zoom, you know that Zoom has breakout rooms. You can put them into uh, smaller breakout rooms and see if they work in pairs or in groups. They start talking. Maybe they're intimidated by, by talking in front of the whole class, but they feel more comfortable uh, in the smaller groups, make them feel comfortable. Just try to see why. You could even uh, ask them, there is private chat, right? You can ask them, what's going on? Are you feeling all right? Can I help you in any way? I really value your participation and I, now I see that you're not uh, very much engaged. What's going on? So let them know that you would, ask, you would like them, you would appreciate their involvement. Yes, and very importantly, tell learners what they will be learning at the start of your le lesson, things that you also do in your face-to-face uh, -face classes. Mm -hmm. And I could also see in the chat some very uh, nice ideas, get them involved in finding the materials, in preparing their materials. Of course, they will, they will play an active role in their learning, and this way they will get more engaged and, of course, more motivated. Not to mention that by if they know what to expect and what we expect from them, it, I think it also raises interest in the topic of the lesson and in, in their, uh, it gets them more involved in what is happening in the online classes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we mentioned earlier, I won't insist now, uh, it's very important to have some clear class roles and routines. And I think it's, you, you know how we often recommend that we have a class contract when we teach face-to-face, -face? the same stands here. It's very, very important for, for learners and teachers to agree on some basic rules. For instance, when you want to speak, you have to use the virtual hand to show your intention to speak. 
um, it's very important to teach them how to mute their microphones, not to use the chat for uh, distracting each other, just for contributing to the lesson and so on. And um, as I said, it's, it's very good if uh, these rules are also sent to the parents and everybody knows them. All those involved in this process, uh, educational process, know these rules. Okay, and uh, what Christiana has already mentioned, regroup learnings regularly. She mentioned the breakout rooms in some of the uh, video conferencing platforms like Zoom where uh, you can group them. And I think this is very important, but not only in um, synchronous sessions, but you can do this. You can also group them in asynchronous uh, projects and you can ask them to do, uh, and they will enjoy this. You know, they, they like even in the classroom and even if you give them homework, they like to work in, uh, in groups. And giving them clear tasks and uh, changing the groups regularly, I think this will increase interactivity and what I think Steve mentioned at some point, uh, making them uh, work um, together and make the lesson more interactive. Right. Okay, um, and Theo mentioned it earlier, it's nice to use polls for different uh, reasons, to use polls uh, maybe to, to check understanding, to use polls to teach a point or uh, to, uh, to um, involve the learners in discovering a point that you're teaching, but it's very, very nice also to use polls or any other tools to collect feedback at different stages um, uh, of the activity. And it can be done asynchronously as well, uh, but um, it works uh, quite easily um, when uh, this is done, uh, sorry, this is done uh, uh, online too. So I just wanted to point out that if you look at all these strategies, they are the exact things that you do in your brick and mortar schools. It, there is no huge difference. The only thing is that we have to come up with, be creative and come up with um, some uh, adaptive skills so we should adapt what we know and what we do in face-to-face -face classes so that we can actually uh, implement them do the exact same thing but online so it just takes a bit of practice and i'm sure that by now you are perfect masters of uh, the online uh, platforms and the lms uh, you have uh, used so i'm sure that you you know how to do this by now just we have to to, to do these things in a in an aware way. When we go uh, gropingly in the dark and we try different things intuitively, it's nice at first, but afterwards we need some, some structure. What was it? There was structure and rhythm, right? So and rhythm. You, have, you have to have a, a certain rhythm and regularity in what you do, yeah. and also uh, apply these strategies in, um, in a way that is uh, uh, obvious for the learners, but uh, in, meaning that you show them you want them there, you want them involved. Can I just add something very Please. quickly to, uh, to the thing that uh, what you said previously to collect feedback, I think mm -hmm. it's very important in order to keep them engaged. I think it's very important to also offer feedback, you know, time feedback. I think it's, it's really important to keep them engaged and they really appreciate if you send them time, um, not necessarily instant because it cannot be always instant, but feedback uh, so that they can, you know, they feel there is a connection and there is a regularity as Christian also mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and now how else can we keep the learners engaged? Well, uh, in whatever subject matter you teach, uh, you have the opportunity to connect the real world with the virtual world. Quite often when we learn online, we feel isolated. We feel like in an artificial bubble and we can't uh, connect with the outside world. Uh, we are going to present some of the ideas that we have tried and work very well for us in our classes. And maybe you can add your own. How do you connect uh, the real world with the virtual world? That may be some activities that would make the learners um, I don't know, uh, connect uh, and get up and do something yeah. real, not just type <laughs> or yeah. speak. Uh, so one of the activities that I like is your treasures, I, I call it, but it can be anything. It could be like a treasure hunt. So you have to ask the learners, find an object that you are fond of or that is interesting or that is a family heirloom and present it to the others. Of course, this could be done in language classes, but maybe you can think about how you can adapt this uh, to other subject matters. 
very good point. Lizzie uh, has already uh, read our mind. Yes, so choosing a photo from your phone and tell the whole class why you like it. They can also share their own. And mm -hmm. it's also, you know, it's the, the human touch that we want also in the online learning and personalizing, as you also mentioned. I think it's very important to give a bit of from yourself, you know, of yourself and from your life. And they will, uh, they will feel you as, you know, closer, a bit closer. Um, and I think you, uh, somebody also mentioned, I think though, that it makes them move around. This is very important from time to time to ask them to stand up and, and move around as well. Okay. Yeah, uh, then uh, we had a, a training for teachers uh, with them a few weeks ago and we asked the teachers uh, to come up with an object, uh, any object, but they should be rather quick, find an object in their household that they recycled. It was repurposed, right? So uh, this is also uh, quite fun because they have to come up with all sorts of uh, creative ideas. Um, so make it uh, time bound so that they move quickly and they don't go looking for something and they come half an hour later saying that they were looking for, for uh, an object to, uh, that would be interesting. You also mentioned uh, presentations. Um, so presentations uh, would be would be nice. Uh, you you could ask them spontaneously without uh, preparing. Presentations involve preparing usually, but uh, you could also ask learners if they have uh, uh, if you have a lesson on whatever. Uh, it could be history, it could be uh, English, it could be their native language. Uh, ask them. I would really like to know more about something in your house. Can you, who's with you? my grandmother okay could you please introduce your grandmother to us so the learner gets up with their phone or their computer they talk to their grandmother they can um, come up with some stories from the past you could also prepare these you could ask them next time we have a class you could uh, actually um, introduce uh, tell us a story a family story ask a parent a grandparent an aunt to tell us something about a historical event they witnessed Okay, I'm afraid uh, they were lost connection. All those <laughs> online classes with the, with the children uh, must uh, uh, take their toll, uh, but it's okay. My son is also learning. We just have two connections, three actually, <laughs> three different networks. Um, it's also nice if uh, now they feel quite disconnected one from the other. So it's nice if you ask them to show you and the whole class what they can see from their window, especially when it was very strict lockdown, um, the window was their contact with the world. So it was, uh, it was nice to uh, actually be able to share that view, to share what they usually see uh, throughout the day with uh, their classmates and with you. And also what they like, what they dislike. So um, how about you? How do you find ways to, uh, to connect uh, your learners uh, with, um, um, yes, exactly. So, Mohammed, that's a good point. So, uh, some some learners might choose to to keep the cameras off. Some, however, uh, for instance, in my son's uh, class, we agreed uh, for um, the sake of uh, quality of the uh, connection that they will keep uh, the cameras off and they will turn on the cameras only when asked by the teacher. So, again, that set of rules that we established together was very important because. Uh, when we ask one learner to turn on the webcam, that uh, will not put such a huge strain on the connection. So it's going to be all right for some of the, uh, for, for most of the participants. Uh, exactly, uh, that's a very nice and creative uh, idea, uh, Theo. Uh, you can uh, ask uh, them, even with the camera up, to give you clues and uh, they can uh, describe the objects and the others can guess. Exactly. So make, uh, the, the point would be to, to make it uh, interactive. Any other strategies to... And welcome back, Theo. <laughs> my Theo. <laughs> and Theo, Theo Kampian is also my Theo, because uh, uh, Theodora uh, Kampian, uh, who wrote in the chat, uh, is a wonderful teacher who lives in Romania. And we have worked together in several projects. And we meet from time to time. And it's always a pleasure. And Juliana as well, <laughs> calling students by name. Exactly, it's it's annoying when you say you there. <laughs> can you uh, can you tell us uh, I don't know what? So it's nice if you connect with them, 
Sure, uh, Theo, let me just find you and I will unmute you. And there you are. Okay. Um, there you are. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry. I think no worries. <laughs> I I uh, I just asked my my kids to to give this up is... online learning. <laughs> yes, give up online learning. Mommy has to work. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, well, these things can happen. And this is why uh, we are very big fans of uh, team teaching and team training, because you never know when something like this happens and you can always rely on the other person. Uh, we have been through these uh, strategies, Theo. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> we, uh, we, just insist, uh, we just want to insist again, because we mentioned connecting the real world to the virtual world. Uh, we want to insist on this human touch. Um, let me just explain something. When I started working online, actually when I was asked if I wanted to become a moderator, I said no. It was 11 years ago because I completely hated technology and I was a complete technophobe and Theo uh, uh, would love to tell you the story how I refused she to have a mobile phone. She didn't have a mobile phone. <laughs> yes. Uh, but when I started, um, I finally Theo convinced me that it's a good opportunity and we should grab it. I did a course for moderators. I started working online and the first group, I just loved working with them. They were from Turkey and I just had a feeling that I got to really know them. We work in rather long projects. They are not very short and we worked together for a few months and I loved the fact that I, I felt like, like I knew them. Uh, a lady had uh, gave birth to a baby uh, during the project. Uh, I was aware of their family. So I just love the fact that um, it was not that um, dry and, I don't know, uh, impersonal environment that it seems to be. So ever since then, I'm very much aware of the importance of making the online environment a human environment, of making it very warm and um, you as a teacher should have also an online persona you should know how to go uh, beyond the webcam and reach uh, to those uh, children so um, Theo would you like to, to go with this one sure so how do your learners feel you are still in touch with them I think this is very important and I think we are uh, lucky to have these synchronous platforms which allow us to to see each other and also to, you know, it's what people say that in online learning, you don't see people's faces and this is, you know, you don't create a connection, but we have this. And I think it's very important for the teacher to be seen and to use the video as much as possible. I can understand that sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult because of uh, the internet connection or, uh, you know, the tools that you're using. But I think it's very important so that they can see you. Otherwise, you know, it's quite, um, I don't think, it, you have a strange, I have a strange feeling when somebody's speaking with uh, not having a video because you cannot, you cannot see their eyes, you cannot see their faces. And I think it's also very important to, um, allow your learners to to express their feelings as well christiana will you yes sure sorry i was trying <laughs> to type in the chat i'm sorry okay so allowing to express their feelings now they also have the different tools have different emoticons even that is important you know they can they can use that but uh acknowledge their feelings acknowledge that the fact that they might also feel uh, at pressure or some under pressure these days or it might be new to them as well we we, we think that they are the digital you know kids mm -hmm. but probably even for them it's something different it's a different way it's not digital in the sense that they need to open a phone and check their mm -hmm. account or something it's digital different digital different and i just uh, think about my son who is uh, preparing for exams and he's, he's, she, he keeps telling me Mom, I'm so tired after, I don't know, two or three Zoom sessions. I cannot think after that. Mm -hmm. So I need to, you need to support them in that as well and understand uh, and also share your own feelings about uh, and yeah. thoughts about this. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's a two-way, it has to be mutual. Yeah. 
And asynchronously, uh, Theo mentioned uh, feedback. It's also nice sometimes, even uh, for asynchronous work, to give them some feedback. Yeah. We, we often talk about uh, diversity of teaching methods. We should also have a variety of assessment and feedback uh, uh, tools, not only teaching uh, uh, strategies. So you should, uh, uh, you can make sh short videos to teach the language points you are making. You can give them uh, feedback um, with audio or video. It's nice if they can hear you or if they can yeah. see you while commenting on their work, uh, they feel the connection. Um, you and it's also, easier for you, sorry. It's easier, it's easier for you, for you. Yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, make the audio or video recordings uh, of the live sessions to, to share. Um, you can also open up, but they were saying that it's important we show them. We also struggle. We are not uh, superheroes who, who manage everything easily. We can share with them that we understand. It's uh, a different environment, it's a new thing, but I'm still in the same situation with you. And finally, this is our last question. <laughs> what makes your learners, what do you think makes your learners want to come back to your online classes? So if you could share some of your ideas in the chat, it would be great. What do you think motivates them and keep them coming back? And we will see why this question we think is important. Sure. <laughs> okay, engagement and acknowledgement. That's nice, uh, Raya. Yeah. The fact that okay. they feel you see them, right? They, they feel yeah. that they uh, do the work and you acknowledge their work. I think yeah, everybody they, loves a sense yeah. of achievement. Everybody. There's no person who does something and uh, doesn't feel good afterwards when they receive acknowledgement or appreciation for their work. And as Theodora said, that's a very nice point. They feel connected and they, they, connected. they like actually to, to be in touch, even mm -hmm. with their colleagues, not only with us, but with their colleagues as well. I asked my son, I was quite worried a few weeks into this situation. I noticed that he didn't call his classmates. He didn't feel the need to talk to them. And I, I told him, um, why don't you want to talk to your classmates? And he said, but I see them every day. <laughs> so he didn't feel disconnected. He didn't feel yeah. that there was a, Which uh, is great. <laughs> a pro yes, a break in communication. I love Steve's idea, curiosity of my home life and perspective. That's very nice. Yes, they are curious. And they, they will, they will, it will help, you know, the connection get stronger, of course. Mm -hmm. Learn something unexpected. Yes, curiosity in general and things that are unexpected and new, of course. Mm -hmm. Ah, nice one. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I usually use modern songs well known by them to teach grammar and vocabulary. That's wonderful. I also do the same. I, I like using uh, music. I think Theo is the specialist in games. I'm the specialist in music. <laughs> we, and I that's why we work that. well together. <laughs> I have to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> to learn, exactly. If we give them, a, a, as I said, a sense of achievement, it's wonderful to feel that you have learned something, that you finished the day with something you didn't know at the beginning of the day. It's something we enjoy too. So maybe this feeling of keeping learning, staying in touch with each other, is not uh, motivating only for the learners. It's motivating also for the, for the teachers. I mean, you can't have motivated learners when the teacher is absolutely bored to death and uh, exhausted and can't take it anymore. So there is a connection, right? We have to to make sure that uh, they are both connected. Sharing projects, uh, great, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, now we are open to, to questions. Um, let me just stop sharing and uh, Mohammed, I will make you host again so that you have control uh, over what is happening. And meanwhile, uh, we, can, uh, we can do that. Just a second to find you in the list. More, of more ideas coming in. Very good ideas. Not very nice ones. <laughs> Just a sec. Mohammed, where are you in the list? I found you. <laughs> and somehow we, I, I, I hope we have proved that a lot of the strategies that work uh, in the classroom, they also work online. And it just probably takes us a bit of time to get used to and also uh, a bit of time for the students to get used to, to the new environment. Okay. 
Thank you so much, guys. This is great. Uh, it's very interesting, very interactive. And uh, the chat is like loaded with uh, ideas. And uh, we're saving the chat. I will send it to everyone. Um, just a quick announcement. I already wrote some announcements, but I was not the host. I could not like control things. I could not speak even. Uh, so uh, for everybody, please write your email here. So we know who you are, we can send you the details. We're willing to send you the presentation if the presenters don't mind. Uh, we're also, uh, we'll send you a link to the video of the presentation. So you can, uh, uh, basically you can uh, review it, share it with people, we don't mind, that would be great. I think uh, we're very proud to have them uh, present here. So uh, definitely uh, sharing, uh, the video uh, is, is a great idea. And uh, we also can keep this kind of communication so we can respond to some of the questions uh, and also inform you about other activities we're doing in the future. Uh, um, I know for sure we're doing another session on Thursday, next Thursday, about evaluation and assessment, but we'll inform you. When we have you in our database, we'll send you, uh, com we'll communicate with you more and you can also invite other people. Uh, so thank you so much for the presentations. Uh, what are we going to do with the time left? We have like 35 minutes left. Where we will uh, first uh, and ask some questions that we have. Uh, uh, so we want to make sure that we're covering all the themes and the topics that we uh, uh, posted on the invitation, uh, the areas that we uh, want to cover as much as possible and get their, uh, you know, the presenters uh, uh, opinion feedback and uh, you know get some of their experience and then we'll answer my colleagues here are also collecting questions from you so please uh, make sure you write your email and write questions um, based on what you've heard and based even on what the, the questions that we ask please write some questions we have time I think we're good uh, uh, you did a great job in the presentation and time wise uh, so we're, we're good uh, I would like to start with uh, a question uh, uh, to both of you guys and you can decide uh, you're unmuted right let me unmute you make sure you are unmuted uh, Christiana let me uh, ask to unmute and uh, great thank you I was <laughs> I muted my microphone for a second and I couldn't come back thank you well you did that to me right <laughs> yes <laughs> payback time right <laughs> is unmuted. no 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 it's another T I'm sorry <laughs> okay, uh, and I can open the microphone when we when it's time for your questions. We can open the microphone, and you guys can speak. And the camera, camera, camera is open. You can open it, and we open the microphone to everybody. So you uh, ask to unmute. Okay, Teo, are you able to unmute yourself? Yes, I think she is now. No, no. Yes. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, one of the issues that um, face us as teachers when we are forced or willingly going to distance learning or online learning uh, is the issue of uh, the syllabus and the course design, the, the, course, the, the course itself and the syllabus. And the question to you, what kind of hints can you give uh, to our um, amazing audience about how to redesign your course and make it fit to online or distance learning. Uh, the, the way usually we have, uh, we have uh, traditional courses, we assume that we're teaching our students in class so we can communicate in the material and tests, etc. We're not gonna talk about assessment. I don't wanna talk about assessment today because we have another session about this, but redesigning the course so it fits online. Honestly speaking, last semester we were forced to move to online or to distance learning. And some of us managed to kind of tweak, twist the course so it fits, but other people could not because they're not used to it. And, uh, you know, they didn't know how to do it. Now we're doing a summer course starting this Sunday or other people started already. How can, what kind of hints, tips, ideas you can give us so they can, they're, so the redesign of the course is acceptable and 
uh, easy to do. We don't want to, because I know if you want to redesign a course, it might take you six months, but we want to do a right. quick <laughs> recipe if possible, please. So maybe Theo can offer you the um, teacher's perspective, the practical one, and I can give you like the policymaker's perspective. Uh, what do you think? Okay, Theo, will you go first? Okay, so, well, things you uh, have done because you're, I think you still teach. What I've, uh, I, I think I, I said, I mentioned this before, is use what you have. I think this is very important not to try to recreate materials, not necessarily, but adapt them. And this, is, this goes with everything that you have online, you find online, the resources. It's important to adapt what you have and use what you have. A lot of the students, in my case, have the textbooks at home. They already have the materials. So they can use them asynchronously and you can also offer feedback and adapt certain parts and maybe explain new notions and new things uh, online in synchronous sessions. But I think it's very important to use what you have and also take into consideration the fact, as I've just said, as I, just, I said before, the fact that it might take you a bit longer. So you might think about um, making them shorter, you know, you know, making them, uh, mm -hmm. make the lessons a bit um, shorter. And another thing is, you know, think about the, the fact that you can send them a video and they can, you know, with a new lesson or with a new thing and they can study and can work on it and they can watch it twice because I think it's in their advantage because students learn at, different pace, at a different pace. Mm -hmm. And this is helpful because, you know, they can watch that twice or three times while in your classroom, you cannot do that. Because you just explain once and that's it. And they can ask you questions, but they can watch it later. So you can, this is a tip that you can use, you know, create short video lessons with the, with the content. Okay. And then add material that, to them, that the resources mm -hmm. that they can do uh, offline as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, just make them short so that, you know, keep them engaged. If you, if you, sh if you send them a one hour video, they will definitely not even open it. But if you send them a 10 minute or a five minute video, they will, uh, it will make them curious, you know, mm -hmm. and I, this is one tip that I can offer. Christiana? I, I liked uh, what Mohammed was saying that for the moment, things are very much at the personal level. Each teacher yeah. or each professor tried to do things as they know but i think we will need to come up with a common policy uh, and uh, i think uh, the, the university of cambridge is the first one to announce that they will continue their classes online next year the campus will be open they will have one-to-one -one sessions with the professors but most of the classes will be online and that is because they are losing lots of foreign students students don't no, no longer travel uh, because they are afraid of a new uh, breakout or a, of a new wave of uh, COVID. So um, this is not here temporarily. We don't have, I, I also saw some teachers, Mohammed, you are right, some teachers who are saying, I'm not going to give it a try. This will be over in no time and I'll just go back to class as, as normal. It's not going to be like that. I think uh, technology is here to stay and we have to learn how to use it so that we don't abuse of it, you know? So we have to make sure that the teachers have support from the policy makers, uh, the, the Ministry of Education, the school management, the institution management need to create some guidelines that would help all the teachers to follow the same guidelines. It's not fair to the learners to have Half of the teachers who work, you know, with the, the latest technology, they make them uh, get involved and stay engaged. And half of the teachers who just send them worksheets and you manage on your own. That's not fair. And it's not fair for the teachers either because the teachers will receive the same salary. So no, we have to make sure that all teachers work more or less along the same guidelines. So we need a certain policy and each country will have to establish what that means. In Romania, for instance, I think, uh, the Ministry of Education did not do things very well, especially uh, at the beginning, they didn't say anything. Teachers started to self-regulate in a way, to find ways. And then all of a sudden they said, they, you have to do it. Okay, but tell me what exactly I have to do and how I have to do it. So make it clear, make it uh, create guidelines, uh, train the teachers help them, support them. Don't just uh, throw them at the deep end and hope they will, they will uh, uh, swim. 
And as for uh, for um, using the, the I, th I agree with Theo, the easiest thing is to use the materials you already have. Um, use the course books, use the extra materials, find lots of resources. I think uh, Liziana mentioned earlier in the chat that you can find lots of materials online and you can create worksheets. And you can also digitalize content. The more confident you, you feel, the more you will dare <laughs> and you will try to uh, create your own contact, make it directly online, create it online, design it directly online. So it, it, it won't happen overnight. I don't think it's a matter that will happen immediately. Mm -hmm. But I think by now we are all kind of comfortable in this environment and we can start daring more. We should go beyond uh, open the book to page seven and do exercise five. We are at the point when we can go beyond and provide resources, videos, materials, uh, create activities that will engage the learners. Can I just add a practical tip? Please go ahead. Uh, it worked really well for Christiana and I because we work together a lot and work with the teacher, work with another teacher, share what you've, uh, you've done so that they will share with you and together create like a, you know, a bank of resources. And I think it's really important at this point. And it's really, it's a time saver, you know, to work together and, you know, a uh, different teacher does a different, uh, adds a different thing, a different material to the, to the resource bank. And I think that's also. That, that is vital, that, indeed. Yeah, it's to, vital. To, to, to collaborate with other teachers. And there is two mothers yeah. to tell you, but she uh, offered her support in her school and uh, she conducted like training sessions with those who were interested. Not all the teachers were there, interestingly, you know. So those of them who wanted to get involved, uh, they were present, they learned, they asked questions, they tried. She was on call sometimes. And her, this is what, how I learned. Phone went on. <laughs> yes, exactly. Asking, oh, I'm in the middle of a lesson and the video stopped. What shall I do? So, you know, having somebody who can assist you uh, and especially if you have a network of teachers who feel more comfortable and support those who are not there yet will be very helpful. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to uh, add uh, just a few points. Uh, the, the policy idea is really great because if you don't give policies, uh, students, get, students get lost and teachers get lost. So you there has to be a, everybody's lost. A, way, a way to guide the teachers. Also, you need to provide support. Honestly speaking, we need to provide support to the teachers and to the students. Um, one idea that we came up with uh, last few days, and we will apply it uh, uh, in the summer uh, session, is that uh, we will uh, have a, a tool or a committee or a group, let's say Facebook group, to support teachers. And uh, for two things, first is to get their ideas and if they have issues, share their problems, share their experience, and also we're gonna provide them with uh, resources, um, how to work online, how to design your assessment, etc. So that's one, mm -hmm. and we're going to do another group for students to listen to them. Be because there that's is right. a problem, there is a gap between the students and the teachers. We have two kinds of teachers. Some teachers are fully dedicated to their students 24 seven, and there is a problem. And there are other teachers who never respond to their students. And that is a problem. Those are a problem as well. So you need to be kind of in between. If we can listen to students and teachers as an administration at the university and communicate with them, I think that will bridge the gap and will solve many problems. The other thing I want to say is that when you put policies and then each department or course or group of uh, teachers can work on this parameter that the university uh, put as a policy and they can create things. I'm going to give you a quick uh, example. Uh, last semester, um, the administration said uh, there are no exams. We're doing the final as a project out of 40. And some teachers freaked out because we're used to first exam, second exam, midterm, final, and then a quiz. And then what am I going to do with the project? Okay. Doing a project is a great idea. And the studies say that projects are a great way for the students to learn, but also this kind of project, and this is an assessment, but it has to be incremented. You cannot just give one project and they submit it. They need to get some feedback on levels, and at the end of the course, they have learned and they get very great that they deserve. So teachers need something like that. They need help, they need support. And I think redesigning the course is a, is a big thing, but it's all, it's also, as you guys said, if you simplify it, work with what you have, 
use simple tools. Technology is, is here to stay, but you don't have to know everything about technology. Use no. simple tools that you know. <laughs> use one of them. If it works for you, yeah. don't worry about other people. Try to learn another one and maybe change it or keep it. But as long as you're using simple technology, you're, you're, you're fine. Uh, I'm still a technophobe at heart, you know, Mohammed. I'm not very good with technology. It's just that you have to learn to, whenever you use something very often, you get familiar with it. So it's that familiarity we're looking for, not expertise. We don't need somebody who can do coding or whatever. No, it's just managing your own platform and your own course. And there is no shame that the student, that the teacher is learning how to use technology. You can ask your son or your daughter, and try it before you send it to the student. Don't make, you know, uh, don't make students make fun of you. Basically, train yourself and then with your uh, students, uh, try it before it's the actual submission mm -hmm. date. You don't know how to, where it goes and they don't know how to use it. And then you, you know, uh, punish them for not submitting on top. You don't know how to work on, on it yourself. So mm -hmm. you can't blame your students. Okay, and this great. is how they can play an active role and we come back to yeah. motivation. To, this is to how you can motivate them. Yeah, you yeah. engage there's, them in the learning process. Yeah, there's well. no harm that your students can teach you how to do it. There's no Absolutely. problem. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I want to give the mic to uh, Khawla. Khawla has a question and then we'll continue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I want uh, to ask you about teaching tools and the methodologies that uh, you, you, you are using. Um, to what degree do you vary in uh, your teaching delivery and uh, what is the importance of that? Uh, of course, uh, the question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want me to go first on this one, Theo? Okay. okay. <laughs> so I think uh, uh, if we talk at a personal level, you know, if we talk about uh, tools, uh, my uh, favorite uh, uh, platform for, um, for live sessions is Zoom for the simple uh, reason that they got used to, uh, initially, we started working with them years ago, but initially they were designed just to be a business platform. And they realized there was a great interest from the uh, educational field in their platform and they invested a lot in creating pedagogical tools. So uh, in the chat, people mentioned annotation, breakout rooms, polls, um, don't take them for granted. They do not exist on all the platforms. And I think these tools allow you to actually deliver the pedagogy you want, which, which as far as I can tell, for you, like for us, is a, a very much a communicative and a collaborative one. So the fact that learners can be involved in different ways, in a variety of ways, and it's not just you, us uh, lecturing and them listening, is already a great step forward in terms of methodology. Uh, I was thinking uh, the other day, uh, somebody asked me, what does it take to be a good teacher, a good online teacher? And I said the same things that it takes to be a good teacher, because it's the same things. The pedagogy is absolutely the same. You just have, as you said, to find the, the tools that you, you need. Uh, I noticed that people, uh, especially younger learners, but not only, like to, uh, to be involved in all sorts of competitions or, or uh, quizzes. So I do use Kahoot quite a lot because I can design all sorts of, uh, uh, of questionnaires or they can design, they can make their own. My, my son is a specialist now in Kahoot um, and he's only 10, mind you. Uh, and uh, he was asked by teachers, by his German, his German teacher asked him last week to prepare for this week uh, a revision uh, quiz for everything they studied this year. And he loved doing it because he worked with a class, with a class book and he looked for information. So it, it's great to also involve them in, in that level as well. Um, then um, uh, uh, for asynchronous methods, uh, I, I do like any platform that would allow them to work together, like uh, Google Drive. If you upload the document and you ask them to work on something together, you create groups, like Google Padlet. Forms. Yes, Padlet. Padlet. Mm -hmm. it so this would be well for my faves. <laughs> no, how about yours? Yeah, uh, I just uh, mentioned Padlet, which I like mm -hmm. it because it uh, offers these collaborative uh, documents. You know, you, they create together, and you can add to them, and it, it's there, and they keep adding. Uh, and you can also post announcements on that, so um, you can use it for different uh, in different ways. Um, I also, I really like the, the tools that allow you to um, 
allow you to video record your screen, you know, for feedback, for not only for feedback, but also for creating uh, simple videos like um, you know we have talk and comment i think these days it's a new extension of chrome for example or screencastify things that allow you to record your your uh, your screen so you can not only uh, create a video lesson to explain a certain uh, structure but you can also use them and i use them a lot to give feedback i really like to uh, you know to tell them because i find it it's really time consuming to write my uh, my feedback especially on assignments and on um, essays or pieces of writing so i always use this um these tools and and they are free and easy to easy to use and i think it's important as i said before for the school to have a common platform so that you can keep things together but it's also important to to use your own the ones that you know make you um, feel creative and be creative and efficient efficient is <laughs> the word that i want you to put before creative <laughs> because it's really important to this uh, these days mm. perfect um actually i use padlet and it's uh, amazing yeah, i like I mean, it's I a like good it. <laughs> space for them to uh, to give their opinion and then they yeah. can be anonymous without names etc yeah there are many similar platforms so you don't necessarily yeah, there are, i don't know if you many. have a problem with padlet there are many similar uh, yeah. uh platforms the idea would be just to to find the one that uh, you like and you feel comfortable with and share it with your learners exactly as long as there is some kind of variation in deliver yeah. delivering the material exactly great you cannot just sit down talk and they're sitting and watching. No. It, it cannot be only a PowerPoint presentation and yeah. it cannot be Padlet only. It ha there has to be variation because as we said, I mean, students learn differently. So you need to present and teach them differently and use different approaches. There are, and technology online is amazing and gives you so many options, uh, mm -hmm. definitely. So thank you, I appreciate that. Um, Thank you so much uh, for this. I want to go to, um, we still have like 15 minutes. I want to go to the questions from the audience and I got sure. something. And uh, the first one uh, says about how do you deal with large classes? Mm -hmm. You have a class of 80 students. How do you manage this when you do it uh, online? And there are, I want to add to this, there are classes that are uh, 100, 150. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have classes in, in Palestine that can have 150 or 200 students. You might have mm -hmm. an assistant, but the idea, how do you deliver your material? How do you teach big classes mm -hmm. uh, and pay attention or give attention to those students, please? Mm -hmm. uh, Tao and I have both been involved in uh, this uh, huge project uh, in Palestine and some of the teachers who are here also worked with us. And we are aware of uh, the, uh, the classes, the number of students you usually have, and they vary largely. I mean, you, you can have uh, small groups and you can have huge classes. So that is, uh, that is an important uh, thing to, to bear in mind, that large classes are a challenge anyway. I mean, I don't think you go into the brick and mortar school and think, oh, I have a class of 80, easy peasy. It's the same challenge uh, online too. Uh, I think that the main challenge is not necessarily the technology because actually it's easier to deal with them online. It's uh, more like the connectivity. If you manage to bring them all online at the same time, it can be difficult to keep them all engaged. But we, uh, Steve also asked about breakout rooms. Breakout rooms, just like group work, would be a great opportunity to uh, make sure that they all have something to do and they do speak, they do something, they deal with the task uh, with, their, with uh, their peers. So it's good to make sure that uh, you, you have some collaborative work, some pair or group work, group work, because uh, to have 40 pairs would be too much to, to monitor. Um, and um, yes, you, you uh, should differentiate just like you differentiate in face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, you cannot uh, give the same task to everybody. You know your learners. So you should know uh, when you create the groups, how to make them so that uh, they have some support from uh, their peers who are maybe stronger, or you go to monitor the groups where you know the weak learners are, just make sure that they have something to do and when they come back they have to report so that you can see they actually worked they didn't just talk about uh, their new phone or their boyfriends and uh, girlfriends so just give them something specific to work on 
Um, and uh, otherwise, uh, the, the same strategies, the same things that we mentioned apply, just break them down. Another idea would be, but this depends on, on the school you work with, if they allow you to break the groups into two, and maybe have 40 people, one class, and then you repeat the class, you don't do something else, with the, uh, the other 40 people afterwards. So it depends on how I they manage things. They will, they, they allow you to do that, but they won't pay you for that. They won't pay you <laughs> and for two classes. There is, the, the, there is actually an advantage to uh, here in online classes with large classes, because students in this case, they can work at their own pace, especially if this asynchronous learning. A thing that you cannot do in a face-to-face -face class, yes, because then you are you have the time limit, time constraints, so it's difficult. But in uh, if they work asynchronous and offline, they can do it at their own pace, and this is uh, really helpful, especially to mm -hmm. differentiate. Can I just uh, answer to Mahmoud, who said that the free yeah. version uh, does not have breakout uh, rooms, yes. and I was going to address it that. It does actually. It does, okay. yes. By default, the free the free accounts do not have them. Really? But now, at least in this period of time, they added them because they you know that they offer the, quite a lot of advantages for users of Zoom. So just make sure, Mahmoud, that you go to your settings and you tick the box uh, with the breakout rooms because by default it's not ticked. So just look for it, tick it, and you will have them in uh, in your sessions but it might be limited. So if this situation, uh, I mean, for a limited period of time, if the situation uh, is here to stay for longer, if uh, maybe in autumn uh, we go back to school and then we have to go back online for two months and then back to school and so on, maybe it would be a good idea for your school to invest in a pro account because it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, um, I wanna say something about the idea that Mohammed, uh, Mahmoud, sorry, uh, has just mentioned. The, the problems that we see uh, in distance learning or online learning or the, the issues that teachers face, honestly speaking, are mainly settings. Uh, and I know, I mean, you cannot really explore Google Meet or Zoom or any LMS uh, in, in a day or two or three. There are like some hidden things that you really need to learn. One thing you can do is go to YouTube and just write the thing, how can I do breakout room? It will tell you. And honestly speaking, I mean, I prefer Zoom over uh, Google Meet because Zoom gives you the breakout uh, room. And to me, I cannot teach without a breakout room. I, my, one of my classes was 47. And I'm, I just I cannot speak to 47. Let them speak to each other. I do the yes. uh, think share pair protocol, mm -hmm. or I call it think group work pay, uh, sh share. So you, mm -hmm. you think about it, you go into your group, discuss it, you go back to the bigger group and share your mm -hmm. ideas. This way, that students learn, they're engaged, they uh, uh, participate, etc. So there are a lot of issues about this. Thank you so much. Um, another question. Uh, what is the best way to work with special educational needs students during this period? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Theodora works in a, a special educational needs school because I noticed she asked the question uh, uh, in the in the chat. So uh, this is something that is very real. We shouldn't think that only schools who are specifically designed for learners with special educational needs have to deal with these learners. Uh, I have delivered a lot of uh, special educational needs courses uh, over the years because there is more and more awareness that there are uh, all sorts of uh, special educational needs that affect a large number of students everywhere around the world. For instance, uh, uh, dyspraxia, which is very little known, affects uh, between six and 10% of the learners. So we can't have a group of 100 learners without at least one uh, learners, learner with dyspraxia and people don't know about it. Now, um, there are, the, depending on the special educational needs, and again, we have to know our learners, there are different things we can do. I, I told uh, Theodora in the chat that uh, British Council is uh, uh, working now on um, a guideline for inclusion online, and inclusion uh, will refer to a variety of things from uh, gender and um, uh, age inclusion to special educational needs. Uh, and uh, we, we, we will also start working because it's not very easy to answer. We will start working on very different um, special educational needs and design some specific, um, specific uh, things. But there are some general 
uh, tips that we can offer. For instance, uh, we should make sure that when uh, we uh, make a presentation, we, we should have some support for our lessons. We shouldn't just be there talking to the learner. They should also have some uh, PowerPoint presentation or some text that they can follow. So make sure that you have some text written. Then the text should be written in sans serif uh, fonts because um, otherwise they, they, it's a strain for the learners. When we include pictures, we should also include the alternative descriptions. You know, when they write a picture with the two dogs <laughs> or something like this. Learners who have visual uh, impairment will be able to uh, use their screen reader and they will find out that actually everybody else is looking at the picture with two dogs and they will be able to talk about the picture even if they can't see it. Um, there, are, there are things that seem simple, but actually uh, they make sense. Uh, somebody was saying earlier uh, to use the names. That is also very helpful because learners will know exactly who you're addressing and uh, what you ask them to do. Otherwise learners with uh, special educational needs might be confused. For learners with ADHD, please organize uh, some uh, of those activities uh, um, that would require them to stand up and do something because you can't ask them to sit down for six hours and do online classes. Also, very important, make sure that uh, together with the school and with the parents, you tell learners that the breaks between classes are vital. And uh, just the fact that they use their energy that was built up during the, the, the class, uh, during the break to, uh, I don't know, do a little dance or just stand up and go away from the computer. That is very helpful and they will be able to focus better in the next class. So depending on a specific um, uh, disability or special educational need, there are specific strategies, but it's a very good point though. And thank you very much for mentioning it. The fact that we have to take into account that not all learners are the same and make sure that we cater for all their needs, especially their special educational needs. And I was thinking the other day, I wonder what kind of social, emotional and um, behavioral difficulties we, we will have to, do, to deal with after this lockdown. You can't assume that learners will go back to themselves. There will be some signs of trauma, of stress, and we have to be prepared. So we have to, to take those into, into account. And I think as a general rule, which applies also to face-to-face -to -face, uh, mm -hmm. face -face classes, is keep in touch with the parents and be supportive. Mm -hmm. I think this is very important and vital to keep in touch with them, with the students and the, the parents. Mm -hmm. um, Th thank you so much. And yeah. just to add a quick point about this. Um, for us in Palestine and other countries, we consider uh, 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 people with special needs are also in a different way, but also uh, uh, people who don't have access to internet, people who mm -hmm. have, don't have access to electricity, mm -hmm. who cannot use their camera or microphone and their phones don't work. And all these issues, those are also special needs. And sure. I agree with your ideas and also uh, give them a special attention. Give mm -hmm. them some time, support them, tell them that you are there for them you know, in communication, in office hours, and meeting with them online, etc. Mm -hmm. This way, you encourage them. Otherwise, you're really neglecting yep. them, and uh, you know, you defeat the point of, uh, you know, achieving your your yep. objectives. Of the, uh, that, that's absolutely right. I, I just want to mention that in my concept and my understanding of special educational needs, these are any needs uh, that would require you to make to to set in place some sort of adjustments for certain learners. So it can be gifted and talented learners. They also need special provisions to be stimulated and challenged. Otherwise they will lose the interest and they will not be engaged and they will create havoc or they will just sign, up, sign off and uh, not connect again. It could be multilingual and multicultural learners. Anything that would make us adjust things just to make sure that everyone in the class learns and moves Great. forward. Thank you so much. We have a um, couple of minutes. If anyone has a question or would like to talk to us, uh, let me know so I can open the microphone. Just write your name, say me, yes, Anna, whatever. Anyone? No one. Okay. Um, two quick notes, very quickly. Um, please, uh, uh, you can, I think you can send the whole uh, comments or evaluation. Uh, we did not do the, the poll, but if I have any comment or uh, feedback or suggestions for future uh, sessions, 
please let us know. The other one is that our, our next topic, main topic, important topic is assessment, alternative assessment and how to do it online. I received a question and this is the second day I received a question from the same person, Dr. Nisreen Nassar. <laughs> alternative uh, and formative assessment. I love it too, I always apply it. But we will have a big session about this because after doing the design of your course, course, you prepared your students to be engaged. You also worked on the teaching methodologies and you took uh, special needs into consideration. You are present, you have office hours and students are there, are they encouraged? Now the big question that the students will ask you and you ask yourself and then your administration will ask you how, do, how are you going to assess your students? I'm not going to say that we have the magic recipe for this but their science and technology and education in this and pedagogy in this area has really provided us with so many great tools and ideas and ways to assess your students similarly to the face-to-face uh, uh, -face meeting and uh, it's been done, uh, used for so many years, and we actually use, all teachers use them in different ways, but you need to have it more organized, more structured with rubrics, etc. So our next meeting will be about alternative assessment and how to use this coming summer course, how to assess your students in this area. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, uh, thank you. for uh, your uh, really amazing uh, ideas and suggestions and interactive. Uh, you played a role model for us for teaching. If we're taking your classes, definitely we'll be so happy to be your students. No, oh, thank you very much. Inter thank you. Interactive and we really enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, uh, my colleagues, Khawla, Bashair, and Ala for their support, unconditional support. We've been working for so many days and for this session and previous sessions and future sessions, inshallah. Uh, also, I would like to thank my colleagues at PPU. Our, I see so many of them uh, uh, here in the session. I'd like to thank my colleagues in other Palestinian universities who've been really uh, eager to come and uh, participate. And I would like to uh, thank people from all, all over the world. We have people from different countries. What is the list? Tell me. We have people from Palestine, UK, UK mm -hmm. Romania, <laughs> Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, and I know someone from the U.S. is there, but he did not write his name. <laughs> we did PhD together. On the cover. Thailand, uh, um, uh, uh, Chris uh, 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 is also there from Thailand. Uh, so this is a great, this is an international event. We it did not cost us anything to travel. I mean, I'm sorry, I could not offer you coffee or tea. <laughs> it's BYOD, bring your own drink. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, please make sure you write your email so we can communicate with you. I'll send you an email thanking you with the details, with uh, uh, the material. And I also have, I want to share with you one minute. I know you can bear with me, right? One minute, I want to share with you a book that I have. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. I know you would love that. I can't find it. But I promise to send it to you. It's a, a book about how to teach online. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a very. Mohammed, we, we have a question. Can we provide lunch? No. Uh, no. Ready for you. It's outside. Um, so everybody, check your flights for Hebron and sh let's go. <laughs> no, I know. And, uh, I have a. It's a good book, uh, an online book. It's a PDF. I'll mm -hmm. share it also with you. It's how to Great. how to teach um, uh, online. Basically, it's thirty-seven pages, but it's full of of, of details instructions mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. that are really innovative. How to do icebreakers, mm -hmm. etc. So please right. um, get back to us um, uh, on, uh, on, on, on the email that we will send to you. And thank you so much, guys. Have a great day and have a nice Thank you. Well. Thank you for having us. Bye, thank everyone. You so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.